good? Are we good? We're good. Yeah. Ah, shit. So anyway, let's see. As I wait for the children to disembark, I notice that they never look. When they cross the street, the kids just run out. They never look. But there's nobody living across there, so no kids are going to run out today. But I notice they never look. I would always look. Even getting off the stairs, I'd look. Just in case some idiot's going off to the right. But then again, I'm from Lynn Mass. And God, anything can happen in Lynn Mass. <laughs> My father used to pray whenever he'd drive into Lynn to pick me up for the weekend. He'd always pray as he entered Lynn. Okay, so my topic, sorry, got off topic there. I started moto vlogging in, uh, not moto vlogging, riding a motorcycle, sorry. I can't remember who asked this. Maybe it was Riding Country. How did you start riding? Somebody asked this in something on Facebook. I'm getting a lot of my ideas from Facebook groups now. When did you first learn how to ride a motorcycle? Well, my riding started before motorcycles for me. I started on a 10-speed bike. Well, I, at first I had one of them banana seat bikes, you know. And then I had a 3-speed because my father was too cheap to buy me a 10-speed. That thing was a joke. I parked my 10, my 3-speed with a friend's bike. He had a BMX type. And when we came out, somebody had cut the chain and stolen his bike and left my bike sitting there. <laughs> It was such a piece of junk, nobody would steal it. I couldn't give that thing away. Now it's a collector's item. I wish I still had it. It was one of those old Raleigh three-speed bikes with the, uh, the crappy olive green color. Yeah, baby, sexy. I was a real popular 11-year-old. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, oh, geez, careful there, Mike. Ooh, that wouldn't have been pretty. Pay more attention. I don't take the corners too fast on the way home. I'm tired. So I was a 10-speed rider all through my teens, and I would ride everywhere. Miles and miles. I went to New Hampshire on my bike. Pedaled my ass all the way there and all the way back. Went to Boston a bunch of times. I loved it. Exploring the road. I, I loved it. And then when I moved to Hawaii years later, I, I, I got a really nice racing 10-speed, 20-speed, whatever it was. Rode all around Hawaii on that thing until somebody clipped my elbow with the mirror of their car. And that was the end of that. Plus, I was getting older, and I didn't really feel like pedaling my ass up and down hills, especially in this state. I mean, look, there's nowhere for the biker to ride. A bicycle guy can't really ride here safely. Because the speed limit's like 45 to 60, and everybody's doing at least 60 all the time. There's no space for you. So the, you're reading in the paper all the time about this bike guy getting killed. I mean, it's bad enough on a motorcycle, but at least on a motorcycle, you're going the same speed as the cars. Anyway, so when I moved here at the age of 35, I said, you know, it's too dangerous to ride a bike here. And it's, the roads, you know, I'm just not going to be pedaling my ass for miles and miles anymore. I just don't feel like doing that. Ooh, another one of these. Ooh, that's the worst place you could have that. Yikes. Gravel everywhere from a pothole right there. Woo. So, I thought about getting a motorcycle. And I had never really given that much thought before. But a friend of mine was going on about motorcycles. He had a road king. So you gotta get a Harley. Come on, we'll go riding together. He's from New Hampshire. So I ended up buying a, uh, a 2003 Harley Davidson Softail Standard. It was the anniversary edition in gunmetal pearl. If you look at my video, Motorcycle Madness, you'll see it. Gorgeous bike. Loud as all get out. Had SNS carb on it. I mean, it was amazing, but it was too loud, and it didn't have saddlebags, and it didn't have wind protection, and I didn't like the squirrely little front tire. 
so after a few months, I upgraded to a Road King. That was my Zuzu. Now, how did I get into the, how did I get trained? That's the big thing. Well, when I bought the motorcycle in uh, March of 2006, I didn't know how to ride it, so my neighbor rode it home for me. And then I had to wait three weeks for the motorcycle training class. Now, when that finally came up, I, you know, I rode in the training class. I got home and I very carefully took out the bike and rode around the neighborhood for a few days until my neighbor started calling me Mr. Rogers because I only stayed in the neighborhood. And then I got out more and more and more. But that motorcycle training class was so important. It was, for, it was through the, uh, the Motorcycle Safety Foundation, MSF. It's a Friday evening, a couple hours reading and talking about different types of bikes. And then there's Saturday all day on the range, and then Sunday all day on the range. And then if you pass your, your test, doing the figure eights and all that, well then, you get a little letter that's stamped and you take it down to the DMV, they give you the written test, and next thing you know you have a motorcycle endorsement on your driver's license, you can start riding your motorcycle. And I tell you what, that, that class saved my life numerous times. And the, when I broke my leg, it's because I wasn't following what I had learned. And that's something I, I really never really thought about so much was the condition of my tires and the road surface. Cold tires on a cold road that's got a lot of loose gravel on it. It's paved, but it's still got a lot of loose gravel and sand. At night, you don't go leaning the bike aggressively. That was just stupid. I'm much more aware of that now. Stuff like, here, here's one. Leaving yourself an escape route. When you pull up behind a car, you don't pull up right up to their bumper. Because what if some guy's coming bearing down on you from behind? You want to be able to get off to the side or get out of the way. That's why you leave it in gear. I see so many motorcyclists, they just pull right up to the back of the car, leaving themselves no out. I'm always looking in the mirror. Whenever I pull up to a stoplight or a stop sign waiting in traffic, I always have my eye on that mirror. Who's coming? Who's coming? You never know. So stuff like that, you learn in the Motorcycle Safety Foundation course. Or I think Harley has a, uh, has a course too that you can do. It's more expensive, but you can do it. And then there's uh, the advanced rider course, like experienced rider, you could do that. There's Ride Like a Pro. Uh, there's a guy named Steve Grodsky. He used to have his own school where he'd ride behind you and talk to you in real time about what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, which is pretty cool. Oh. Steve Grodsky unfortunately got killed by a deer. It jumped out on him when he was in Texas riding his bike, but he wrote, he wrote a really good book about staying safe on the road. I recommend it. Then there's this guy named uh, Clement Salvadori, Clem they call him, and he does a lot of writing about his road trips, the things that he sees, and he's very descriptive. He's a, he's a great writer. If you're looking for road stories, Clement Salvadori is awesome. He writes for a lot of motorcycle magazines. All right, it's Mike Haley 7. Talk to you.